The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. everyone and welcome to Scarefest Television. The original broadcast date is March 27th, 2020. We're still in business everybody. We're just uh we're bringing our, what was it I said in the um in in the post for tonight? We can't be together. So let's while we're apart, let's do something together or some bullshit psychology pop psychology <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, of course, and you can hear in the background my co-host this evening is the lovely and talented Cece Ann. Cece, welcome back to Scarefest Television. Hello, hello. So what we're going to do, we had a big time last month talking to some of the Scarefest fans about what they have been watching uh, because this was already, you know, people were already becoming shut-ins at the end of last month. Um, so we, we talked to people about what they've been watching, and we decided to do it again because I didn't have a guest scheduled, and screw it. Um, because we did, we had a lot of fun. What? Well, I'm very excited to hear what everybody's watching because I think I'm one of the few people oh. out here that does not have Netflix. So you guys have to tell me what you're watching and how great it is so that I can be jealous and learn something. Anita reminded me that the reason we didn't have a guest scheduled is because I was supposed to be in Lexington this weekend. I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was supposed to be at the always fun Lexington Comic and Toy Convention, which, of course, has been rescheduled for May, God willing. Um, God, I would hate to be in that position. Uh, just, you know, to be wrapped up in that and have 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 that on the horizon. I, I feel for you, Jared. I feel for you. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do, we've, we've arranged some callers. And so we're going to come on tonight and we're just going to find out how people are spending their free time. What is good out there on the television services? And uh, I've got a little link pulled up here of uh, free apps and stuff that you can load on your Fire Stick. Probably on Roku, whatever your smart device might be. Uh, where you can find some, if you're not aware of them, you might find some more uh, entertainment options. And um, we do have, we have celebrity announcements tonight. And two good ones, very good ones, by the way. And the bitch part of it is that we actually had them last week. And this is my life, everybody. I get a text at 945 telling me that I can announce these people. And of course... During the show, I don't exactly sit watching for text on my phone. So I could have announced them a week ago. But anyway, so we've got two good announcements. We're going to do them right after the 30-minute uh, mark. So uh, uh, stick around for that. Pay attention. But you will like these announcements. And we got a bunch more coming up. But these are the ones that we, we had ready. <laughs> I wish I had a better way to explain it. We had them ready. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to... Uh, I tell you what, uh, switch over to me in case, in, in case the, um, so we're going to go ahead and get our first caller. Now, our first caller was actually here before, but he is a Scarefest regular, a regular on the Scarefest um, Facebook group. Everybody knows him. And why, is, when I click that, isn't it working? There we go. Okay. We're going to dial in Mr. Jake Godbold, mostly so that he can give me a hard time about me watching Pet Cemetery and liking the remake so much. So, I'm going to call him now. There we go. Yeah, it, it uh, other than when I pull it up, it doesn't pull up his phone number. Jake? 
Oh, Jake. I don't hear anything. I don't either, but it showed him there, I thought. It says right but there. But I'm happy there. to get on your case about liking the Pet Cemetery remake. Come on, Wes. I, Come on. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just... I thought I thought I didn't think it needed to be done. Why can't I hear Jake? Jake, it shows that you're on this call. Make sure I call one. Well, I know I called the right number. That's the number he called last time. Jake Godbold. There he is. He's over here chatting. Jake, answer your phone. I love live TV. Hello? There he is. Oh, hey, fuckers. Hey, Jake. <laughs> okay. Start now, I'm going to give it. with me. Boy, you got guts. <laughs> I, I am going. I, I First of all, well, okay, let me let me get uh, oh, CC back on the screen here. Um. Okay. First of all, one of the reasons I wanted to bring Jake on is so that he could join CC in busting my chops over enjoying the remake of Pet Cemetery. I now I I agree. Well, okay. First of all, let's get our common ground, Jake. I agree with you. Sure, this sure. was not a remake that needed to be done, and the storytelling <laughs> did not vary enough to even make it worthwhile. I will grant you that. Okay. Okay. But that little girl, well, the wh whether it was practical effects or CGI, that little girl with the eyeballs that went two different directions after she was dead. <laughs> I'm sorry, that made the entire that made it all worthwhile to me. Well, I will say this: I went into the theater, and Pet Cemetery, the original, is my favorite horror flick of all time. It always will be, always shall be. Um, however. I went into the theater, and I left. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it at all. I don't know why, but that being said, the movie is heavily, heavily flawed. Um, so well, I, I want to hear this. What was flawed about it? Okay. Well, first of all, I mean... I swear to God, if you tell me it wasn't true the book, I'm going to hang up on you. Well, it wasn't true to the book. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't true to the book at all. Okay. Um, I um, I didn't like the concept that the girls could. Uh, well, wait now. Spoilers, everybody. Um, I I hated the fact that I think the concept of the girl being the one resurrected would have been so much better if they didn't spoil the damn thing in the trailer beforehand. That's just no. one thing. Yeah, okay, um, I'll grant you that. Yeah, it was it wasn't any great surprise that um because I, I although now I hadn't paid attention to, I did not remember the trailer, Jake. So when the truck was yeah. coming down the highway, but I will say even without the trailer, they telegraphed that by a mile. The little boy oh, was in man. the road and then she was and you knew she was at least road adjacent. So yeah, they they did that I would say if any, and this happens a lot in I notice in movies, even when I like it, when I like the ending or anything, maybe maybe I've hung around you you dudes too much. It was just it felt very telegraphed. In other words, it was a good build up, but then it was like, okay, go ahead and pull the damn trigger. Right. I will say that there was one part in it that just ripped my heart out. It was the part where um, the mom shows up and uh, sees her daughter and then um, the only one out of the entire family that sees her as her as her is Gage and I was like that's just heartbreaking <laughs> um, innocence you gotta love it <laughs> but um, it, it, I, don't, I don't know it just didn't I mean, after it's all said and done, I mean, they didn't do the whole Timmy Baderman storyline, which really pissed me off. Um, the, 
I can't believe they didn't have John Lithgow do a New England accent. That kind of threw me for a loop. Uh, it's, it, but overall, uh, you can't tell me for certain that that movie was better than um, the original one. No way. No way in hell. No, no, no. <laughs> but, I, I, I do not. I, that wasn't what I said. I just said, all I said, this is all started because I posted I was watching it, and little girls I all go like this right when I'm typing. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. So. I will say this. If you look it up, the alternate I would the alternate ending for it, in my opinion, would have made it a much better ending than what they went with with this family of zombies now going around New England. So but So it, what was the alternate ending? It's basically um he um, you can't spoil an alternate sorry. ending, Jake, because it's I not mean, the real ending. People no, have I'm not sorry. seen it I'm, yet. It's been around for a while. If people haven't seen it yet, I'm laughing because I'm kind of watching along as I'm talking, and there's a delay, and I'm seeing Wes all of a sudden having these death spasms and putting his hands in his <laughs> face and stuff. And I'm just like, wow. But anyway, basically, what happens in the alternate ending is that. Um, He's about to kill uh, his daughter. He she flip flops and basically he bar- he lets his wife bleed out and he buries her. And then um, they all come. It cuts to the next morning, and they all they're like gathered around each other and undead family. And you see Gage in Ruth's lap and crying like crazy and. It's something that I'm describing it horribly, but you, just do a YouTube search for it. And the alternate ending to Pet Cemetery 2019, it's probably one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen. And I loved oh, it. We lost Cece. <laughs> we lost Cece. Let's see if we can get Cece back on it. What the hell happened to Cece? <laughs> Cece just, welcome to Skype, everybody. Okay. So, but, let me see if I get this okay. straight. You say that you're going to hang me up, and yet no, you hang I her didn't. up. I didn't. What, <laughs> what the hell? God dang it. I love the way my... It, when I lose a caller, my, my screen just goes absolutely bonkers. Well, you didn't lose me, Wes, so that's uh, all that matters. We got her back. We got her back. <laughs> Tell me and oh, Cece what, you, what you're watching, Jake. Well, what would you recommend? I am, at this time, I am binging all of Stuart Norton's films. Hmm. Since uh, we have, since we lost him on uh, Wednesday, um, I have been watching Reanimator. I've been watching From Beyond, uh, uh, Castle Freak, uh, Fortress, all those films. Because he's such an awesome actor, or uh, director, and really push the boundaries of practical effects. I, I, I truly believe none of his films would have been made today uh, in this day and age. Uh, they would have just been too expensive and CGI to death. And uh, yeah, so I've been paying tribute to him. I will say I did see a weird movie called Daniel Isn't Real. I just Shutter. watched it. I just watched it. It's literally... Drop dead Fred, except evil. It's yes, <laughs> and and starring and starring of all people, Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. I was like, okay. <laughs> Wait, which so, one was he? He was Daniel. He was the oh, interesting. I see the resemblance yeah. now that you said that. Oh, come on, that jawline. Yeah, he got that's Arnold's son. <laughs> So I think it because but, um, Cece's watching it, that's on Shudder. That's on Shudder. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. And um, next week, apparently, they're going to be starting on Shudder the Cursed Film series, which sounds interesting. I think that sounds amazing. I'm on board with that. I can I just keep on the Shudder channel on Shudder TV all the time. Just drop in and out. Love it. Shutters is awesome, especially with Joe Bob starting up in on the twenty fourth. Yay! Yeah, very <laughs> exciting. Very exciting. 
Indeed. What are you watching, Wes? Besides really bad remakes of really good films. <laughs> I, I was actually going to save this for the next segment, but I'll, I'll go ahead since you asked. Um, uh, now, I've been watching all kinds um, of stuff. <laughs> we talked about a lot of it last time, but um, I have been I We just now got around, and I'm embarrassed to admit it, Stranger Things. I went to watch oh. season three. I have not watched season three. And you know how they do the little recap at the beginning? And I was sitting there realizing, mm-hmm. I don't remember a damn thing about season two. So I'm having to go back and rewatch season two just because I feel like I have, everything has been familiar. I said, I remember that. I remember that. But for some reason, the, uh, the, um, the little intro thing they do, I couldn't remember a damn thing about season two. So I'm just going to rewatch season two. Then I'm going into season three. I figured you'd be watching that Tiger King shit. <laughs> I've got that on my notes here. I have not watched it. I'm sure it will because anything that creates that much buzz on the internet has to be fun to watch. Um, Jake, uh, you, you have a way with a words. Painful. You have a way with words. Have you watched any of it? No. Okay. Well, then you're <laughs> but I, I, I will probably. I, I don't know. For some reason, that show just said. I bet uh, Wes and Nina do that. Uh, watch that after <laughs> tending to the cows. Uh, but. Um, I probably will watch the first episode. I like crazy, so okay. <laughs> uh, no, actually, up until we get back to, I've been going back and rewatch. I'm a superhero movie fan. I, I guess I have probably watched um, Captain America, Thor, and Avengers probably half a dozen times a piece. Anyway, um, I just, mm. it, I guess you could say, okay, in in the situation we're in. Superhero movies are my comfort food. Aww. Oh, is a okay. isn't special, you know. And, and so it, I like, I like that hero aspect. I, I like happy endings. Uh, so yeah, in, Endgame was kind of a downer, um, but or, yeah. or Infinity Wars. I mean, Infinity Wars. Uh, but don't uh, watch, but, don't watch. Daniel isn't real. Then that's all I'm saying. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, I, I I made it through ca- uh, yeah cabin in the woods, and you can't call that a happy okay. ending by any means. So you know I, I'm okay with imaginative non happy endings. Which is one of the reasons why I liked cabin in the woods so much. It's not very often you have a movie that has uh, doesn't have a happy ending, um, yeah. and I think that's a little bit more realistic than some of these movies that all end up being fluff and rainbows and puppies at the end. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the life life isn't covered in nurse, so it, you are going to get cut. So, yeah, it <laughs> or in be. this case, or in this case, now it's going to be infected. <laughs> okay, uh, Jake, I'm going to let you go. Uh, we're going to uh, go to a quick commercial break, everybody. When we come back, we'll bring our next caller on. Meredith, uh, have your phone ready. We'll be talking to you Bye, in just Jake. a moment. See you, fuckers. <laughs> consider consider yourself a regular Jake. <laughs> like I- everyone is talking about CBD oil and it seems like almost everyone is using it. The research is ongoing, but the apparent health benefits are overwhelming. If you're going to use CBD products though, what brand should you buy? First, find out where the hemp was grown imports are flooding the market. How potent is it? Look for a brand that plainly states its concentration on the label. And look for full spectrum CBD. This means the oil contains CBD and all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and nutrients that are found in the entire cannabis plant. Look for Blue Leaf CBD oil. Blue Leaf Naturals is a Kentucky proud company. They use only Kentucky-grown hemp, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses. Visit their website at blueleafcbd.com now and use the code SMILE at checkout for free shipping. Hey Scarefest fans, how's it going? Glenn here from FakeShemp.net. This week I've got a movie that may have influenced one of the greatest horror films of all time. It's a big call, kind of controversial, 
But is it true? Let's take a look. Most of us would agree that Toby Hooper's seminal classic of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most important and influential films of all time. That's irrefutable. But what if I was to tell you that two years earlier, an Australian film had already told that story? Well, at, at least to a degree. Night of Fear was released in 1972 and it assaulted audiences with its whiplash pacing, ferocious attitude and unrelenting terror. In fact, the film is only 50 minutes long, barely even a feature, yet it dominated the drive-in movie scene at the time and it traumatised a generation of Aussie moviegoers. As you can see from the footage that you're watching right now, Night of Fear is intense. And no doubt you can see that it does cover very similar ground to Chainsaw Massacre. Of course, it's nowhere near as integral or groundbreaking as Hooper's masterpiece, but it is definitely cut from the same cloth, or vice versa. It even tells a similar story of a woman whose car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and she's tormented by some crazy hermit guy. And some people might misconstrue it as insulting to even suggest that. Nevertheless, it does make you wonder. I first saw the film years ago on VHS, and the good news is that it did get a re-release onto DVD back in 2005 by... You guessed it, Umbrella Entertainment. Are you starting to sense that this company is kind of a big deal? Yeah, they kind of are. Anyhow, the power of Night of Fear lies in the fact that it's basically a silent film. Or at least there's no dialogue. It's structured purely on tension and its visceral qualities, making for a relentless 50 minutes of sheer terror. Even in today's standards where horror is taken to the extreme, Night of Fear holds up. But I'm going to let you guys be the judge of this one. Uh, whether or not it influenced Toby Hooper's Chainsaw Massacre, the, the fact remains nothing will ever come close to his masterpiece, so I guess we don't have to worry too much. But if you do want to check it out, as always, it's on Amazon Prime over there. I'm always amazed at how much of this obscure Aussie content you guys have at your disposal, so definitely exploit the shit out of that one. It's there for you to take. Um, look, this is a movie I'd highly recommend to budding filmmakers because with it being practically silent, it is a great it's a great exercise in you know pacing and composition and how to get bang for buck with very little else uh, so definitely if you want to make a movie take a few notes from this one anyway that's it from me again uh, don't forget to catch me at fakechamp.net hit me up on the social medias I've got the podcast Good Movie Monday which drops on your Sunday and uh, lots of big things coming up in the coming weeks so I hope you are I hope you Climb aboard the bandwagon and join me as we travel through 2020 talking to all kinds of people. And until next week, take it easy. And welcome back everybody to Scarefest Television. Um, I do want to remind everybody, so we'll give our sponsors extra plugs. Um, Blue Leaf, uh, you can order online. Go to their website, uh, blueleafnaturals.com. Um, but you're not, you're not going to run into her at the, uh, at, 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 at any of the, uh, conventions for a while. It doesn't look like, okay. Um, we're go getting ready to call Meredith Blackwell. We'll give her a chance to like lock the kids in a broom closet or something. She said in the chat room, I'm not sure. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get her on. Uh, everybody, we will have our celebrity announcements after the next commercial break. And we're going to find out. There she is. And I hope I, I just realized that'll be up on screen when I call Scott. And I, I butchered his last name. So he'll be able to see that up on the screen when I typed it in. Oh. Hey. Hi, Meredith. How you doing, hon? Hi, Meredith. I'm good. Hi, Cece. Hi, Wes. Hi, Nita. Hi. Now, everybody, uh, as point of introduction, Meredith is the person that writes the um, the script for my week in horror when something's actually worth writing about. Uh, so, so yeah. She, yeah. So if it, if if any of the information's ever wrong, it's, it's her fault. <laughs> Because I didn't I research didn't it. Read it. Uh, honey, I am Ron Burgundy. If you put it on paper, I will I will read it. I don't care. Um tell oh, don't me, and test C me on that one. <laughs> tell me and CC what you've been watching. How have you been spending your shut in time? Um, well, there's been several things that I've watched lately, but the one that stood out the most is on Netflix. You'll have to get it, CC. Um, but it's called The Platform. Um, it's, the, uh, the what now? It's 
the platform. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it randomly showed up a couple of days ago, and I was like, yeah, why not? Um, it's a Spanish-speaking film, but they dub over in English, so that kind of throws you off at first. But it's kind of about this, I guess it's a prison where everyone is in a cell with one other person, and in the middle of the floor is like a giant hole, and you can look down at the cells below you or above you. And a platform comes down, and it has food on it. And the higher up you are on the food chain, the better you eat, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty good. I mean, it doesn't sound good. I'm probably not explaining it well, but it's really good. I would highly recommend it. There's a lot of um, – you see a lot of the darker side of humanity and the gooder, the better side of humanity. It's really good. So I was going to ask, is that there, there's some competition between these people to get, you know, obviously the better, the better pick of things? Right, there is, yes. Um, and when the platform reaches down to your level, you get two minutes to eat whatever you want. And whatever you leave, the person behind you eats. And so, you know, not to give it away, but some people defecate on the food just to oh. be dicks. And, oh, so yeah, I get it. Just, so it just goes down. It doesn't like, oh, not yes. they don't push a button right. on the third floor and the little door is open. Ew. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you're like on the first floor, you get the best food. If you're on the bottom floor, you get nothing. And it kind of follows one man's journey as he tries to fight the system, I guess you could say. But there's a lot of blood and gore. It, it, it appeals to the horror fans, but it's it's good. You, you had me at defecation. What can I tell you? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, you said that was on Netflix. Yes, I do and recommend that one. Oh. It's a series. It's a movie. It's about, I think it's about an hour and a half, maybe, close to two hours. I like movies. I'm not a crazy series person. I, I know I've said that from the beginning, and I did watch that Dark Crystal thing, but it's because I already knew what the ending was going to be because I saw the movie. Are you watching any series <laughs> right now? Um, no. Uh, I was going to start Ozark because I really enjoyed the first seasons of that, and it came out today. I'm looking forward to that. Um, not really. I, I mean, I have children, and I have a small army of children, so I don't get to watch a lot of TV, so, you know, I got to sneak well, it in there. just saying, he's thinking about getting Disney, so that could be something y'all could talk about. Uh, Disney's worth it, I think. I mean, even without having children, The Mandalorian was fantastic. I mean, I'm a giant nerd, so I love all of that. But, I, but The okay. Mandalorian was great. I, I do want to see The Mandalorian, just because hey, everybody's talking about it. But, okay, Meredith. You listened to the last time we did this, and I talked about wanting to watch the original Spider-Man series. You send me mm -hmm. where they've got the cartoon. No, no, right. not the cartoon. I oh. a skinny guy in a in a spandex Spider-Man outfit, woohoo, shooting cotton <laughs> rope out of his wrist, and um, gotcha. I uh. I will say, and practical effects, everybody, this was 1979, 80, around there. So practical effects, but some things I liked about it, like, um, I have to say, I, and this is something the movies to me have never topped the series on. The way when he, uh, they couldn't really do a great job of him going up the walls because, you know, they basically had him on a pulley and, you know, pull him up and so he's just clawing at the walls. But when he would go off a rooftop to go down the wall, that son of a bitch would like slink over the edge, whoever the stuntman was that was doing it. And he got really good at it. And I mean, it was like, wow, that <laughs> poof, he's, he's off the edge. And uh, so that, that, that was why I, uh, I, I did like some uh, things about that. There were just for the time I thought, I thought it was very, I thought it was very well done for the time. It got tedious because like I said, they couldn't, bring any good villains on. He just had to beat up like muggers right. all the time. But, uh, but yeah, not the car cartoon. That is one thing. Now, when I was a kid, I loved cartoons. Um, but like, now I will say I did go through a spell. Was it Netflix or Hulu? Might've been Hulu that for a while had a bunch of the, um, the, uh, incredible Hulk, uh, cartoons. Uh, I watched. Yeah, Iron I think that's Netflix. 
It might have been on Netflix. But and they had yeah. a, like Iron Man and and Captain America. Um, I did watch a few of them just because I'm a big kid. But uh, but I have to say I've never seen a, a DC cartoon that I liked except for, now Super Friends when I was like twelve. But um, but the yeah, DC... I'm not I'm not big on cartoons either. But so except now, Rick and Morty, I don't know. Have, they ever, have you ever watched Rick and Morty? I have never watched it. Oh gosh, you you got to You got to at least give a couple episodes of Rick and Morty. I think you'd like it. Well, I I will take I will take your recommendation. That um, I just don't have enough time to watch everything I want to watch, especially when I'm rewatching all my comfort shows lately. Um, do you watch anything funny though? Okay, you 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 you've got people defecating on other people's food, and so you, <laughs> you're you so far. You, this has been a depressing phone call. What what is what is, have you watched anything uplifting? Um. Uh... No, no, that's not my thing. <laughs> I'll just admit it. No, I'm not a comedy fan. Thank I'm you, more of a, I'm right there yeah. with you. I don't want to watch a rom-com. I don't want to watch a comedy. Yeah. I want to watch scary. What night is it? It's scary movie night. Tomorrow night, what night is it? Exactly. It's scary movie night. Mm-hmm. No. no I, I've never been a fan of comedies. I would much rather watch a thriller or a horror or anything other than comedy. And I mentioned this last time we were talking about this. Um, I think it's on Netflix. Mr. Right. I, not a horror movie, although there is some blood. There's plenty of bloodshed in it. But I'm telling you, funniest damn movie I've seen for 10 years. Mr. Right. Oh. Mr. Right. The, the premise is that this girl starts dating a hitman. Oh, and 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 love ensues, and all the all the frolicking that you get when you date a hitman. It's it's quite. But the dialogue when you is. You date a hitman. You say that like that's commonplace. <laughs> uh, probably more common than you think. The the, I, the the best the best part. It was very well written. The dialogue is just right on point. You almost need closed captioning to keep up with it sometimes, which apparently I have to do a lot anymore, because um, it keeps coming up. That uh, damn, I'm glad I had that on, but. Um, but okay, so um, uh, the platform is your is your recommendation. Yes, sounds absolutely. amazing, and really I love good. subtitles. Love them. Well, it's not in subtitles; it's they dub dubbed. over it in English, so their mouths don't match what they're saying. But it's <laughs> it's still worth seeing. That actually, uh, now one I was watching, and it kind of, and when the when all this stuff went down, it kind of seemed like a waste of time. The rain, I was watching the rain on Netflix. I liked that. I, I've seen that. Uh, you know, may I don't know if it's because may, may, maybe I am one of those people that just don't like foreigners. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the 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 dubbing. It was it was I think it was German. Was it German? I think it was German. Uh, I think uh, so. Yeah. And it ah, was that's so, good. Well, it was it was dubbed. All the names sounded German to me. You know, Hans and 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 <laughs> right. Hilda, and uh, so anyway. Um, but the, my um, my point was that it's it's more unusual. I I don't know what it is. It, I don't. I t- it has to be a really good movie for me to like a dubbed movie for whatever reason. And that show it. It just didn't have enough action to keep to hold to hold my interest. I I, I got several episodes in. It was like, eh, this is tedious. This is like The Walking Dead without zombies. <laughs> well, see, I I like um, things that aren't quite usual, you know. And so, like, the platform was good because it's not something you would you see all the time. And um, the rain was good because again, it the premise might have been used before but it's not something you see all the time and there's another one on netflix called dark and it's mm-hmm. also dubbed over from german or something into english and it's really good um, but it's also one of those that you don't see all the time so i really like those i don't like watching something that's been done a thousand times in a different way it's boring to me so yeah that I, dark, I like dark is dubbed. on my watch list dark is on my watch list well dear that one's good I, I, we're going to let you go. We're going to take our next commercial break, and then we've got one more caller to get in. Um, 
So uh, uh, right. Scott so Wazalewski, if you're listening, listening, we're gonna we're gonna be just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, I'm getting echo now. I'm getting echo. Bye, Meredith. Good night, Good folks. Night. Bye. <laughs> Do you feel lost in life? Do you seem to be stuck in emotions that are not yours? Is your home not the sanctuary it should be? Contact Spirit Mechanics, where they take a team approach to your metaphysical and spiritual problems. Spirit Mechanics specializes in aura cleansing, stone attunement, attachment removal, and house cleansings. Spirit Mechanics tailors their approach to your individual spiritual path and needs. Now find them monthly at the Central Kentucky Mystical Market in Lexington. Or on Facebook by searching Spirit Mechanics, that's M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X. Spirit Mechanics, for your spiritual health and well-being. Hello, Scarefest fans. This is Joe Lewis with once again another review. I've had a hard time making it to the movies as of late. Sorry about that. Can't figure out what's going on. But nobody's letting me in the door. So, anyway, I have found something else to do. I have found other things that have been out that I have not been able to go to the movies to see or go rent or anything like that. So, Today, we're going to talk about Jim Jarmusch's The Dead Don't Die, with probably one of the best casts of any Jim Jarmusch films, which is saying something if you know anything about him. I mean, the man gave us coffee and cigarettes, Broken Flowers, Dead Man. I highly recommend Broken Flowers. Also recommend his vampire film, Only Lovers Left Alive. Anyway, the cast of this movie is incredible. Bill Murray, Adam Driver, Tom Waits, Chloe Savani. Steve Buscemi, Danny Glover, list goes on and on and on. RZA, Larry Fessenden, who's a producer of, of low-budget horror films and has acted a lot of low-budget horror films. Basically, it's a peaceful town of Centerville, and they're in the middle of the zombie horde as this dead start rising from their graves. That's it. So if you've ever seen a Jim Jarmusch film before, then you know that things are a little weird, things are a little skewed, the characters are interesting, he's an interesting guy. I can't recommend all of his movies. Like I said, I think Broken Flowers is probably Bill Murray's best performance. Better than Lost in Translation, it's what he should have won an Oscar for. The Dead Don't Die. Should you see it? Well, if you've seen a Jim Jarmusch film before in life, of course, yes, absolutely. If you like weird things, if you like movies that aren't necessarily normal, then yes. Is it a zombie film? Absolutely. The only complaint I have about it, actually, and I noticed it's not one of his more highly rated, and I don't know why, because I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, the only complaint I have about it is the last five minutes, because it's a little preachy. We kind of already know what he's trying to say, and then he says it, and I don't need him to say it. I just know it, because I watched the movie. I don't particularly care for those types of preachy little moments. But Bill Murray's excellent in it. Adam Driver's great. Adam Driver has all of the self-referential lines. Like, for example, they're driving down, and there's a song called The Dead Don't Die by Tyler Taylor of uh, something Simpson. And um, Bill Murray goes, where's this from? He goes, well, it's, it's the theme song. The theme song. Yeah, the theme song to the movie, right? There's a lot of stuff like that throughout the film. So check it out. The Dead Don't Die. Fantastic cast. Really good performances. Is it... There's a ton of gruesomeness in it. No, not necessarily. Oh, Iggy Pop's even in it, if you're an Iggy Pop fan. Just to be quite honest with you, I'm done to death with zombies. I stopped watching The Walking Dead, so I'm sick of zombies, but I enjoyed this one. I highly recommend you watch The Dead Don't Die. Thank you so much. This has been Joe Lewis. Stay safe. And like I said before, you have all this extra time. Now is the time to subscribe, watch, or listen to all those Bonehead Weekly interviews and commentaries. Don't have weekly, Joe Lewis. <laughs> Oscar fans. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna get Scott on now. When I, if he's, wa I'll be embarrassed if he's actually watching because I, I can tell you, I, I spelled his name phonetically when I just typed it in, so n n not not his real 
that's it. M C O P D. There it is. That's not bad. And add. Where are all the people that are watching the big flu movies? I've watched Contagion, Blindness, Flu. Hey, Scott. Um, so, no, it's all right. Uh, Scott, well, I, as you were uh, answering the phone, Cece is watching all of these Contagion movies, and um, I have I have purposely uh, avoided them. You know, I I saw the Contagion, like the the for the that one, like when it came out, the first one. You know, it, it scares the crap out of you. It really does just because of the fact of it's kind of almost gotten to that particular point, but hopefully not as far. So. Exactly. I don't need that much more stress in my life. The little girl's eyeballs doing this was bad enough. Um, the, the, uh, that, and I want to say Netflix putting on um, Pandemic, which is a documentary yeah. pretty much, right at the right time to get that bitch trending. I actually think this is an, this thing was an entire publicity stunt done by Netflix at this point because it was like the the timing was just perfect. Yeah. So uh everybody, of course, uh Scott Wozalewski, he's been listening to this show. He was listening to this show back before we even had video and people like CC to brighten it up. He was listening for me. He's he's uh, I was. I was. <laughs> He uh so so despite what Jake Godbold says in the chat room, some people like what I have to say. Um, Scott, what are you watching? Um, I've been watching. Uh, I mean, I love the classic horror movies. Actually, yesterday, last night, I watched Young Frankenstein. That was on, which is always pretty fun to watch. Uh, Dale and Tucker uh, versus Evil. I love uh, that. Cabin. I love that. I have to say, I'm good glad. one, good one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just with, like, Young Frankenstein, I mean, classic when it comes to Mel Brooks, um, an impeccable cast. Uh, Dale and Tucker, I know that they've been talking for some time about possibly doing, like, a sequel, um, which hopefully that does happen, uh, just because the movie just was so funny. It was really, really good. Uh, I was actually even uh, watching right before you called the one guy who did the commercial about the dead don't die. I actually saw that when I was in movie theaters. I mean, really, really good cast. It was, a, uh, I don't know. It wasn't the equivalency of night of the living dead because nothing will ever get to that pinnacle right there, but it was, it was, it was similar in some ways. So now, um, one old one, it's not that old, I don't guess, but, and now this is another one of those I'm embarrassed, uh, the view, as as uh, Jake said, the views of West Forsyth do not necessarily represent the scare fact. I just got around to seeing Dog Soldiers. I actually okay. thought, I actually thought I had seen it, and then I'm watching. I'm like, I haven't seen this. What what the, what the hell did I watch? Um, because isn't there another movie where, and and where, um, the army actually created the werewolves to be their soldiers rather than the concept of the, isn't there a movie like that? Are you talking about tank girl where they had, they were, weren't they no, like tank not girl? kangaroo people. Come on. No werewolves. I've never heard of anything like that with the army. I mean, I know that there was wolf cop and then there was the second wolf cop movie, but I've never heard of anything of the army doing some sort of a werewolf gene or anything like that. Well, I, I guess what, <laughs> maybe we should make one. Um, basically, think about, it. okay, if you take the concept of dog soldiers, which he was trying to get DNA, basically. Yeah. Um, in other words, the sequel to dog soldiers. Well, I thought I had seen the sequel to dog soldiers that has never been made, apparently. Um, I could have swore that, that I had seen that movie. Uh, okay, Wendy, and, and I and I will I will. They're not yelling at me in the chat room, so um. Uh, now you do get to sit through something very exciting, Scott. You get to sit through our celebrity announcements, and I think you'll like these. Oh, and, and 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 you're hardcore, okay. but I think you'll like these. Our first okay. celebrity announcement, everybody, coming to Scarefest 2020, Scarefest the 13th, 
October 23rd through 25th, 2020, Mr. Michael Berryman. Now, Michael has been to Scarefest before. He is a return customer, you might say. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes, of course. Weird Science, I absolutely loved him. It wasn't that big of a role, I realized, but I loved him in, in Weird Science. That when he, when he leaves and says, I don't want to lose my day job as a school teacher or whatever the hell it was, <laughs> I love that. Uh, Devil's Rejects, many, many more. A classic. Now, here, here's one I got to admit. Of course, a lot, of, a lot of people aren't zombie fans. I'm way behind on Z Nation. Um, and come to find out, he was in Z Nation for several episodes. And I, I, I haven't apparently gotten that far along. So, hmm. I did not know that. Well, uh, now you do. Uh, he was uh, the founder. The founder was his uh, character. So I, I got to go catch up on Z Nation. I liked Z Nation, but man, what's it on? Is it on Netflix or Hulu? I forget which. But th there was such a big lag between seasons that yeah. by the time the next season would get dropped, kind of almost like The Walking Dead. Um, I, I kind of, I guess yeah, you could say, I kind of, I kind of lost interest in it. It was almost, it's almost like Stranger Things. I'd have to go back and watch the previous season to remember what the hell was going on. Yeah, but what you got to do with Stranger Things? I mean, in the second season, you got the snowball dance. That's like you just start right there, and then you can ease your way into the third season. Well, so that okay. way you don't have to watch the entire thing. It's just maybe watch maybe a couple of the episodes at the end. I mean, I've seen all three seasons. Um, the third season was really good. Uh, even with, there's actually a, uh, after like the very last episode for the third season, you, there's a small kind of goes into the next season as well. Well, I've already started now, so I'm going to watch it. So that's, um, <laughs> our next celebrity announcement. Now this one, this one is one that I love people. Uh, not that I'm actually even that familiar. I mean, I recognize her from her work, um, but I'm a Scream Queen fan. I love a good Scream Queen, and you don't get much better than Linnea Quigley. Um, she, uh, uh, Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Demons, Silent Night, uh, 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 Deadly Night, Graduation Day, and an entire host of, of uh, we'll call it B-movies. Um, that, um, but yeah, I, I'll put it this way. I can spend the rest of the episode reading her IMDb page. And, uh, so, uh, Linnea, Linnea Quigley is coming to the Scarefest. And, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So everybody, that is our celebrity announcements for tonight. Tickets are still on sale at the scarefest.com. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, there's two more reasons that you're going to want to Get out into public this October, thescarefest.com. Um, now, I'm going to draw a blank here. I should have pulled this up. I One thing that I watched on Netflix, I forgot to mention before, and it falls, it kind of falls into my superhero fetish. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a, she's a teenage girl, and she's starting to, apparently she's hit puberty, she's coming to her powers, and she has basically really off the chart telekinesis. And the show itself was a little tedious, but the last episode she blows up some mother some guy's head. And it was just okay. done so perfectly. I mean Carrie. No, 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 no. Carrie. No, no, no. Carrie. Like I wouldn't remember Carrie. No, this is a series. It's like six episodes. It's not a long series. Uh, so, in other words, it's a good afternoon binge. Somebody in the chat room, I'll bet somebody in the chat room knows what movie I'm talking about just based on me talking about her blowing up some guy's head. Um, in my chat room. Well, I mean, it, I mean, I don't, I have not heard about that, but I mean, if you, I mean, I was listening about with your superheroes and stuff like that. I mean, definitely love them. Captain America, uh, Infinity War, things like that. I mean, Black Panther. Uh, but have you seen uh, Brightburn? No, Brightburn. no, that Loved that is one. Loved Brightburn. But see, um, yeah, uh, I, think... I still have to pay extra no, for did... that one. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. 
I mean, with Brightburn, it was in the theaters and stuff. I know all the theaters are shut down now and everything. Um, but with Brightburn, it was really interesting. I mean, it was a pretty good cast. Um, but the interesting part of it was it's a kid. I mean, comes from another planet, mm-hmm. so kind of almost the foundation of Superman, things like that. But then as it goes on, he starts hearing voices and things like that. And I don't, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you're going to want to watch it. It's really, really good. Um, Michael Rorker, who played Merle in Walking Dead, he's got like a little, he's kind of like a YouTube person at the end, but really, really good movie. I liked it. I think that they said that there's even a possible sequel in the works, Um, but it was a really good movie. I think you'll like it because it's pretty much what if, Superman was evil. I mean, that's, I guess, the best way to look at it. Yeah, that one is on my to-watch list. I have not watched it yet, but both um, Bonehead Weekly and and Brian Stedman uh, wrote a review for it for ScarefestRadio.com. So I'll put it this way. Yeah. When, somebody, when my people start giving me movie reviews, although I don't think... I don't, was it Bonehead? I don't think he... He liked it, but I don't think he loved it. Uh, but I think Brian, I think Brian really liked it, um, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, that one is definitely. <laughs> and then uh, Melissa Nicholson, Brightburn sucked. Now, um, well, you know what? Not everybody's gonna like them. So, yeah, but nobody's gonna listen to Melissa Nicholson because you think I'm bad about not having seen the classic horror movies. That, apparently, she's watched more TV in the last two weeks uh, since she's been off than she has up until now, as in from birth until well, now. And uh, so, yeah, she she's uh, getting around to watching things like uh, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on the on oh, Street. Uh, I, what was The Shining? I think she just now saw The Shining. Oh, wow. I mean, I mean, how I bad say, can it be when a family gets locked up in a house together for a period of time? No yeah, worries, right? Really, right. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. I, would, I don't know. I would, I would say with the quarantine and everything, that with some of the states being shelter in place, I would say with horror movies, uh, my favorites to watch right now would be George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. I know that Second Sight's going to be re-releasing it, which that'll be incredible to see it be re-released on Blu-ray. Uh, the John Carpenter's The Thing. That's another one. The Shining as well. I mean, those love, three. Love. Uh, what's that? Love, love, love. The Thing is one of my favorites. I mean, it's. I just think that with those movies, I mean, this is the best time right now just to be catching up. I mean, with my favorite of Halloween and Friday the 13th, I mean, there's so many different Friday the 13th to pick from. There was even the one that was recently done, Friday the 13th Vengeance. It was a fan film. But it seems like the guy who portrayed Jason, um, he's been even been going to cons and stuff like that. So, I mean, when it comes to those classics, I mean, people are going to watch. I mean, people will watch The Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, regardless, I mean, it's just great horror. And um, I think there was even there was even the one documentary that was uh, just made. It talked about, I think, 80s horror and stuff like that. It's four hours long, but it looks really good. Four hours yeah, it's about four, yeah. It just to talk about all the different movies. It was um, it covers a lot of different movies, especially during the eighties. So, wow, you need an intermission for that one. Yeah, I think that I think that's what they were also talking about with uh, the latest Scorsese film from uh, Netflix, The Irishman, or something with De Niro and Pacino. Because, oh yeah, I don't know. I have, I haven't seen that one. I know that that's about three hours long, but. Uh, I don't, the one thing that I always remember when I went to the movie theaters, I was seeing Quentin Tarantino's Hateful <coughs> Eight, which is kind of similar to Carpenter, and that movie you actually got an intermission, so that wow. was kind of nuts. So. Wow. Yeah, th- that was a discussion we had on Facebook one day. Somebody was complaining about how long movie some of the movies were, like hell, uh, uh, Avengers uh, Endgame took like three days to watch or something, um, and they were going. <laughs> Why, why can't movies used to only be you know 90 minutes and so people were piling on so well if you want to tell the story properly you know and uh and and i'm like and some of us gotta pee you know i'm, I'm not a young man anymore 
So, well, but, I mean, if you, I mean, even with some of the older movies, I mean, like with Gone with the Wind, I mean, that's a classic and stuff. But I mean, I think that had entrance music, that had an intermission. So they gave the people the opportunity to get up, stretch, you know, go to the bathroom if need be. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it was a different time, but it was of still course, around. Back then, they didn't have stadium seating and recliners, too. No, they didn't. That's true. <laughs> my, my theater still does it. No, oh my goodness! <laughs> no, my the theater that I, I go to, know, which is another reason I never see horror movies because they never get horror movies. Uh, there, it's a family <laughs> thing. The, uh, but it was built the the theater that you're in now is was built in the early fifties, yeah. attached to a building built in the early eighteen fifties. That kind of deal. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it's very, very historic, and so they keep they, they want to keep the character of the 1850s or 1950s uh, 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 movie theater. So the seats, although they have been redone a time or two, they uh-huh. are still good old fashioned movie theater seats. And wow. yeah, oh, yeah, and, and after 90 minutes, you start. Ready to go. Sw- swinging swinging yeah. the hemorrhoids from one side to the other, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, now I had something else. Oh, I want to go back to where we started this conversation. Um, yeah, okay. The, uh, how do you feel, do you, do you watch the, the quarantines and the, um, the, all the movies like that, the, do you? I think we we touched on it, but are you are you a? Uh, do you really? Do you think this is a good time to be watching those type movies? Uh, I mean, I think it kind of depends. I mean, if you watch a couple, but I mean, if you do like a straight marathon, it's probably going to start to a little bit of paranoia. I mean, I've seen a couple of them, um, but I mean, I haven't seen every single quarantine movie. I think if you watch too many, I mean, just with everything that's on the news nowadays, um, it'll scare the crap out of you. And Scott, are you saying there's something wrong with me? <laughs> I Now, I'll tell you another no. thing. Honestly, now that we've actually been through this, and I made this point on Facebook, and I don't care if it's Walking Dead, if it's... Uh, 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 the one with Dustin Hoffman, any of them. I have yet to see a movie about the end of the, the of society that brings up people hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a new one. I mean, that definitely could be. I I don't know. There was the, um, I think it was the Killer Tomatoes. I mean, that was, that's like a B cult classic, I think. I'm aware, yeah. But, yeah, but, I mean, I've heard about what the whole why they're doing that but i mean actually even recently i think with supermarkets and grocery stores they're not allowing anybody to return anything so oh yeah I w- well I mean, actually i, I would see now well okay there's two ways so, to look so at that wait, Wes, what you're saying is what we need in movies are more bathroom scenes it's not that it's it's that i can't believe that no writer in the history of writing about this stuff went you know what people are going to do they're gonna they're gonna buy a three year supply of toilet paper, just just as soon as they shut the borders down. That's the first thing no, they get. No, you're right. You're right. In all the apocalyptic films, they're always going into the stores looking for canned goods. Why aren't they looking for toilet paper? I right. hear you. I, I, I think that they're that worried about it. Well, see, they. I would, w- I mean, <laughs> that's that's the thing. I mean, even like, yeah, because like even like with World War Z, um. Even in that movie, like in the early part of it with Brad Pitt, with that early part, um, he's more so looking for medication and stuff like mm-hmm. that. He's not even worried about food or anything like that. Yes, but I think it's a common known fact that Brad Pitt doesn't like shower regularly, so they know he stinks. <laughs> right? Is this is um... never talk bad about celebrities? We might want to book them, Cece. Shit. <laughs> I think he's you know proud of that, though. Yeah. You know you what? Can... I'm, hey, you know what? I I like Brad Pitt in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I thought that was a really good movie. Uh, Tarantino did an incredible job. The soundtrack and everything. I mean, that was his homage to Hollywood. Plus, it was a really nice kind of what if tale, kind of getting away. And I mean, it wasn't a tr- it wasn't almost Tarantino like. 
until like the very end with uh, with DiCaprio. And I don't want to ruin that if you haven't seen that yet, Wes. So. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. Well, no, it's, it's a good movie. I mean, it's very true to Tarantino dialogue and everything like that, but it's, it, it's still, it's still a good movie. Yeah. It was nominated for an Oscar, right? Uh, it was nominated for a bunch of Oscars, but it only won yeah. like a couple. I know Red Pitt won an Oscar and then I think maybe one or two more, but other than that, um, it didn't really win too much. I mean, Parasite doing so well in other movies. So, Have you seen it? Who out there has seen Parasite? I have not seen it. I have not seen Parasite yet. I have no, not I seen it, and if I want to read a damn movie, I'll buy a book. I'm sorry. Well, I know well, Glenn okay, but, talked about okay, Parasite, and he but, felt okay. it was a little bit overrated. Okay, but Wes, I, I, I actually saw earlier in the show you're kind of talking about uh, foreign films. Have you ever seen Pan's Labyrinth or Orphanage? Love Pan's Labyrinth. Love it. Because with both I... Pan's Labyrinth and Orphanage, they were both foreign films. They're both uh, Spanish. Both were are really, really good. I'm not going to argue about whether they're good. Actually, I haven't seen... Uh, um, I've seen but Pan's Labyrinth, I just, I, I, I watched it. Some, I don't even know if I watched the whole thing or not. I'll be honest with you. Oh, it was an amazing fantasy film with yeah. great characters, great monsters, great special effects. And if I, I remember mean, correctly, not. subtitles. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it does have subtitles. It does. I mean, it's also, it was pretty interesting. I mean, it was done by uh, Guillermo del Toro. Um, love, love, love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even with The Shape of Water, which, I mean, that's pretty much just Creature from the Black Lagoon, and he's even said that, but he did his own take on it, which was neat. But with, with, uh, with actual uh, sex with the monster, yes, I've heard. <laughs> I did not remember a sex scene in that movie. I do not remember a sex scene. Well, it may not have been. It, it was implied. But I'll tell you, I am not a fan. I'm not a fan of romantic movies. But that, you know, The Shape of Water, I was really feeling that creature. Well, okay, but I mean, you talk about with the romantic movies. Would you say uh, The Bride of Frankenstein? Would you say that's a romantic movie because of the fact with how Boris Karloff's uh, character and stuff like that wanting that love? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes. I don't. I, I now. I have seen it. I don't. I watched that when I was like a child. I do not remember well, anything about for, the movie. Something for you to catch up on as well, there was. You know. Well, okay. Now let's clear this up, everybody. Now, one thing that does need to be cleared up. I'm doing these these this series of shows about what people are watching. We're going to try to make it a monthly feature. I love hearing. I love watching stuff. I'm a farmer. My day job has not changed. I am. Um, yep. In other words, I don't get to sit and watch Netflix all day. I, I yesterday, I yeah, it was yesterday. I actually had to pull a calf. I had to. Re, I had, we had one stuck in the pipe, and we had to. We had to pull a calf. And uh, she's fine. Calf's fine. It was a heifer, and calf was too big. Not to go into great detail, but I'm just saying the things. That, the only thing that has given me a little more time lately is it's been so damn muddy. That there, we are limited in what we can do, but yeah, I'm feeding you people. I we we we've taken cattle in the market, so thank you. When you when you walk up to that grill <laughs> this summer, say thank you, Wesley. Do the cows get offended when you call them heifers? I'm just wondering. Well, I mean, well, isn't that just another order of cows? And I mean, you've got cows, you've got calves, you got <laughs> yeah. Bowls, if you, you know? if you actually want to be technical <laughs> about it, you know, no, they don't get offended because a they're cows, and b Heifer is actually describes a cow that has not had their first calf. Oh. Once they have their first calf, they're no longer a heifer, although most farmers will continue to call them a heifer until their second calf. Little wow. trivia. Well, now here, Wes, I got a question for you. Now, what kind of do you have like an iPhone, Android? What do you what kind of phone? Android. Do you Android. Okay. Um, I don't know if you listen to any podcasts or anything like that. No, I do not um, have time. But, well, if you, or even Anita, if you guys, if you, if any of you have time, uh, there's a really good podcast. It's Casualty Fridays. Uh, Kane okay. Hunter, Tiffany Steppis, 
and Felicity Rose. They're, they, this is like their second season, and it's just them talking about different things. Right. Um, all three of them do an incredible job, and they've actually even talked about Scarefest a couple of times on there, too. Cool. No, actually, uh, Felissa was on this a couple weeks ago. We talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've watched three, I think three episodes of it. As far, I'm not yeah. saying I don't like podcasts. I don't nobody think I don't like podcasts. I just, <laughs> a, I'm a visual person, which is why I watch theirs because they actually they do it like we do. Although I did give them a yeah. hell of a time about not doing it live because I think if if you're just going to show up one day and record half a dozen episodes, you're just coasting. You're just coasting. Well, I mean, I don't know if any of them are going to be coming to the next Scarefest. I mean, I would hope so, but I mean, I think that they would do a live episode at Scarefest. They might. Well, actually, it's possible, but I'm going to tell you, okay. Um, Kane, in particular, now, of course, uh, uh, Kane's already announced he's coming. But Kane Hodder, okay, first of all, getting him away from his table is not easy. Yeah. Doing anything that delays any of his fans more than 60 seconds is not easy. He, he loves his fans. He doesn't want to put up with people like me. Um, and then he'll be doing, he'll be doing the ax throwing on Friday night. He'll be leaving the con just, uh, before quitting time and going over to, um, and, and, uh, doing the ax throwing. tickets on sale for the ax throwing, by the way, the Uh, him and RA will have already booked. We got more celebrities to announce for the ax throwing, but, um, yeah. But yeah and, uh, you take it. Once you knock out Friday night, there just ain't a lot of time to catch uh, Kane in particular during the convention while we're there to actually do anything like that with him. And before Scarefest, now leading up to it, he comes in town a day or two early. He's at the TV stations. He's one of our big um, traveling celebrities. Promoters. Yeah, promoters. That's a good word. Thank you, Mr. Thesaurus. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he but he he he's, he he goes out. He loves the scare fest, so he goes out, puts uh, puts out a good representation for us. Um, so he, yeah, yeah. In other words, you, yeah, you'll see a lot of the the podcasters that do stuff from the the show catch a few minutes with him. But as far as getting him, the only time um, um, Bonehead um, when his movie came out and we premiered his um, movie, the Kane Hodder story. Oh, documentary, Hell and Back, yeah. Yeah, he, the, for that, he sat down that night with uh, with Joe and did a live interview. And that's the only time okay. I've seen them, I've, that's the only time I've seen the man sit still that long, not counting his booth. So I'll just, and, and, and I've seen him a lot of times, so there. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, Scott, uh, you've made your recommendations and, uh, and, uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you this year. Of course, um, a little side angle. He, he won the last <laughs> the tickets. I much. haven't seen him the, the code yet, but he actually, he's got his three day pass all lined up. So, Woo-hoo! um, so uh, I'll see him this year. We're going to let you go. Then we're going to take our last commercial break. Then we've got our, um, uh, mutagen nation, Billy crank segment will be coming up. We'll be right back, everybody, with more. Thanks for watching so far. Akashic Awareness is a metaphysical healing and learning center unlike any other. A large selection of crystals, gems, and minerals greet you as you walk in the door. But from that point onward, the journey is yours. They offer a great selection of metaphysical tools, state-of-the-art holistic healing, with classes and lectures scheduled throughout the month. Akashic Awareness is open Tuesday through Saturday, noon until 6.30, 7 on Friday and Saturday. Visit their website for a current calendar of their almost daily special events and guests at akashicawareness.com. And while you are there, be sure to join their email list to stay current. Akashic Awareness, 328 Sycamore Street, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Coyote Chris Sutton. 
shamanism, spiritual advisement, paranormal investigations, inspirational presentations, bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. See, you've got a sort of kinship with that lion. I don't know how he fits in there. Ooh, I need one of those. You know, look, look at all those naked people behind there. It's a little bit of Oh, my God. Oh, yes, bottled people. But they would taste nice. My name is Jim, and I like women. Pretty June Kenny. And when boy meets girl, well, they do what comes Ooh, How does watching these people in their car in an intimate moment make you feel, Labrachia? A little, uh... Oh. Short, short-handed here. Hmm. See, this is something that scientists used to do back in the 50s, 60s, Labrachio. They would take cats, they'd put them on a table, and then they'd vaporize them. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's a very terrifying phone. I mean, that's rotary, and we don't use those. No, they don't, uh, don't have no apps, man. She's not happy about what he's doing. But this is all typical scientific endeavors. It's a very large receipt she's got there. Huh? Collect all six. Yes, watch them dance, you strange scientific fellow. Ooh, that must be uh, the decaf that she's taking a bath. <laughs> Hello, just checking on you. Going back to uh, to my can or whatever I sleep at. Look, they're discussing how to get away from this man. One of them is uh, trying to climb out a door. Another one's climbing underwear drawers. Yeah, don't fall in the underwear drawer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy's in the office. It's going to the prom. Let's go. Bring your pet rat. There goes a lab rat. That should look familiar to you. There's the Ghostbusters. <laughs> this is where Stephen King got the idea for Cujo. Uh, all right, Labrachio, how are you feeling? Well, heck far, Professor, you shrunk me, man. Look at this. No. Oh, oh. no, you moron! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
And if I'm not mistaken, that is the final in that series from Mutagen Nation, Billy Crank, and FakeShimp.net. I want to give Glenn Cochran full full credit on that, everybody. I also know our friend Glenn Cochran that does our movie reviews in the first uh, segment. Um, Good Movie Monday. Don't forget that. Good Movie Monday. Of course, here in the States, it's on Sunday because we observe real days of the week, unlike Australia, that's it's like. They just make shit up over there. Because it's foreign. They, right? they, they have animals. They have animals that don't even exist in the real world. Sometimes I think the flat earthers, <laughs> the flat earthers aren't lying. That it just, you know, they're a bunch of actors over there, and and it doesn't even exist. That's because. Well, I mean, they, they, they took a, they, they took a ground. They took a, 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 an, an otter duck creature, and gave it a, a new sign. Put it all together. They just but, but, but their, their most famous animals have pockets, and that's really cool. Just like a good dress. Um, everybody, I uh, hope you enjoyed tonight's show. We always had, we, we had fun with this. We wanted to kind of give you a little something, something to do and entertain you during this, uh, this uh, time in the country, in the world. I hope you enjoyed it. Cece, did you have fun, dear? I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much. It was really great to talk to some of the callers and see what they're doing as well. And I, I just, yeah, really enjoyed it. I just wanted to point out, though, okay, now this is another, another thing. You can tell when people are sitting around the house too much because um, the um, – the t- all the TV stations around here, anyway, have started, like, their weatherman stays home and does the weather. So on TV, they're wearing a suit. Well, now that we're doing it from their living room, they're, they're, they're wearing shirts. I'm expecting any day one of them to pop up in their pajamas and, and do, the, do the weather. Last episode, Cece hosted with me. She wears this low-cut, fancy uh, outfit. And now I have her all to myself, and I got a T-shirt. I'm on quarantine. I had dinner plans that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, slap another frozen pizza in the oven and have dinner tonight. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll get our act back together, everybody. But uh, we just we we kind of been concentrating on uh, on just um, everything going on. And uh, but uh, but all of a sudden, a lot. Yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, it seems like a lot of. A lot of our people are home on Friday nights that used to not be, so maybe we can uh, we can get some guests scheduled. We've we've got some stuff scheduled for next month. Uh, we'll try to keep you updated on all the news that's going on that we can find out about. Oh, and here's one thing before we go, go back to the the commercial thing. Okay, everybody, uh, the Scarefest commercial that I that I overdubbed the um, the audio on. This character that I did for this, and it's a cheap knockoff of the Crypt Keeper. I did not make this character up. That's as good of a voice as I can do for Crypt Keeper. There, I said it. However, we're going to start using this character more, so we need a name for him. We need something that is Crypt Keeper adjacent. In other words, something that pays homage to Crypt Keeper without making it sound like we don't know what the hell this is, you know, this this is a cheap knockoff of the Crypt Keeper. Right now, I'm leaning towards Grave Janitor. The Grave Janitor. See, Crypt, Grave, Keeper, Janitor. I'm not sure Janitor has such a nice ring to it. Well, uh, Custodian, then. I can say Custodian. I, I did... So the crypt Custodian. It, uh, cri- uh, I'm almost afraid to use crypt. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. To, I'm afraid the dude will sue us if we get too close to his name. True. So anyway, everybody, here's the character, the voice behind this. I really don't want to do this. Can I help you? I'd like to give blood, oh, but does it? Well, the voice at the end, not oh, no, this one. Not at all. We have a new guy now. You won't feel a thing. Follow me. You get cookies for giving blood, right? We oh, sure do. We have chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin, bread nut butter. The Scarefest is coming October 23rd through 25th at the Lexington, Kentucky Convention Center. Is it thescarefest.com? Uh, these cookies are stale. <laughs> <laughs> That's my version of the Crypt Keeper. That's as good as I can do. I, you know, you raise a voice and you speed it up just a little bit. But the point is, we need a name for him. We maybe need a name for be, it. Maybe there should be a contest. Well, I'm, that's what I'm leaning towards. So um, what we're going to do 
is knowing that you cannot use a, a grave custodian or grave janitor because I've already thought of those. Um, Too many syllables. Do what? Too many syllables. I agree. I want something simpler. Casket carrier. Adam Johnson. God. Go, go back to playing dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons. Tomb Reaper. Okay, now, Glenn, that's actually not bad, but it's almost too serious. Tomb mm -hmm. Reaper. Hmm. Although tomb's a good word. Work with tomb people. We could work with the word tomb. In other words, this is the Crypt Keeper's blue-collar brother-in-law. Picture that I would in your hope mind. That, I would hope it would have Scarefest in it, though. Something Scarefest, something, something. It's so possible. not just anybody could steal it like we're doing. <laughs> hey, hey, GalaxyCon is all of a sudden doing their own video show. I've seen that. They've been doing Facebook uh, live stuff after we had them on. See, see, this was a good idea. But nobody does, nobody does it better. Um, <laughs> God damn it, I probably owe somebody a royalty after I did that. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that, that little content, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a three day pass. And if I got some, I've got a, I've got some other swag. We'll figure out the swag we're going to throw into it. At the very least, you'll get a three day pass. I've got some souvenirs. I've got the, the video game cases, uh, for Friday the 13th, the video game. I don't have the game, but I, I've got the cases that they're like collector's items because. And an autographed photo of Wes. Uh, yeah, we will throw in one of those. I can dig. I'll dig through my <laughs> autograph photos. I've got a bunch of uh, some actual, actual celebrity autographs, and we'll like give you a choice of of, of one of those. Um, restaurant coupons not as valuable now, so we're not giving those away. Uh, not just to uh, not to <laughs> blow um, smoke up anybody's ass. But um, but anyway, so that's what we're wanting to to do. And throwing them in the chat room tonight will not work, no matter what. What you'll need to do is. Um, Tag me on Facebook or on, on Twitter, or you can tag The Scarefest on Twitter, at The Scarefest. But um, if, you'll, if you'll tag me personally, Wes Forsyth, on Facebook, that way I'll see it. Um, and uh, and uh, we'll, whoever, whoever knocks my socks off, as we like to say in the old days, um, I will. Are you even will. wearing socks? No. <laughs> But I never do for the show. This once again, not a big change for me. Other, other, than, other, other than the slightly borderline panic we had until we restocked on toilet paper. That was that was that was the only real change to my life uh, because I rarely go out on weekends. I'm here on Friday nights. Saturday, I'm usually taking a nap because I was up so late on Saturday night, and uh, and then farm stuff and everything. So yeah, it's you know. It's it's it is what it is. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, next week we do have the uh, the fifth holler episode. Episode two will be after after Scarefest Television. Uh, we've got that installment. I've already. I've, now one thing I do have coming up this month. We got some movie shorts. Um, uh, we've had two of them submitted, so we're playing at least one of them next month. Uh, we'll be getting the guest line up. I did, actually I've got a couple of them scheduled. I just got to confirm that the people still want to do it because they were promoting things that aren't happening now. Um, but uh, I think they will be good guests even regardless of that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be safe. Be careful. Stay home. Be healthy. <laughs>